one day after we talked about potentially being the lowest game of the season, potentially being the, the lowest point of the season, uh, completely everything's up in flames. What a horrible performance. The Tigers turn around and on Monday night put up 12 runs against one of the better teams in baseball. Let's talk about it as baseball works, right? As the Tigers work today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Tuesday. That's the day. July 26th. 2022 thanks for making lockdown tigers your first listen every single day we are free and available wherever you get your podcast including youtube uh i am your host scott bentley did i say that i'm your host scott bentley of course naturally and uh the tigers just put up 12 runs on the san diego padres and that will be the discussion of today's show what like what a sport what a team what a what a life. You know, literally a day after we talk about oh this is this is a train wreck this this season's unsalvageable. And, and the crazy thing is is all all that's still right. This is one game, you know. I'm not I'm not making it sound like I'm getting ahead of myself. It's just like the timing is just hilarious. Like objectively it's funny that the day after the whole fan base was like this is terrible. We are tired of this. Uh, everybody be upset. They turn around and, and put up 12. And that's just like how it, it you know, life works, I guess. Um, but the Tigers did put up 12 runs against the San Diego Padres and Sean Manaya. Uh, very, very impressive outing from the, the entire offense, of course. But specifically, I mean, there, there's some specific players within there that I thought really stood out. Um, and some pitching performances that were really solid, some pitching performances that we have to talk about because they are probably getting traded. Uh, a lot to discuss, some more roster moves, uh, more IL stints because that is the way this season has gone. Plenty to discuss today on Tuesday, July 26th. Uh, but we're going to start with the fact that the Tigers put up 12 runs, and this is from Cody Stavenhagen. Lefties haven't been a problem. For the Tigers, which is which is kind of frustrating because obviously majority of the teams you're going to face and majority of the arms you're going to face are righties. That's what makes lefties so valuable. But it, it, it's just it's wild to me how they. OK, so this is from Cody Stavenhagen. They entered tonight with a 100 WRC plus and a 269 team average against lefties, which is third in baseball. Third highest batting average against lefties on ba in baseball. Their team WRC plus weighted runs created plus for those who aren't aware. So if it's a hundred, that means it's league average. You you are you are league average in creating runs if it's at a hundred exactly. So against lefties, they are exactly league average uh, as as far as runs created goes, and then team batting average third in baseball. Their team WRC plus against righties is sixty six, which is the worst in baseball and it's remarkable that against righties which is a majority of what you face this team has found a way to be 34 percent below league average that is what we call really bad and yet today, again, against the lefty, makes sense. So I, I guess that's it's almost like I'm saying what? Like I'm saying I, I don't expect this to continue. I don't think that takes a rocket scientist to really be like, oh, this probably isn't going to last. You know, like I, I think everybody is kind of, you know, this is probably just a flare here, but it's nice. And I'm a fan of this team first and foremost. And uh, above anything else, I'm a fan. And I don't care about draft position. And also, we're in July. If you're really like, we need to lose to get a better pick in July, may maybe, like, don't be up so upset about, like, everything, okay? <laughs> it's July 26th. It, it, it's not going to matter. And also, where has getting a top pick gotten us? 
What has that gotten us? Nothing. Okay. Like the, the, the draft pick argument is so the Dodgers are, are the best farm system in baseball year in and year out. And they pick at the end of the first round year in and year out. Doesn't affect them. Doesn't affect the St. Louis Cardinals who have a 20 something pick every single year and keep finding talent. Doesn't affect the Rays. T- baseball is not like that. Okay, that's it. I just went on a huge tangent. That's not even important right now. We're talking about a 12-4 victory of the San Diego Padres. So I just thought it was important to note that even though this, this was a you know offensive explosion and that it, it was nice to see, you know, lefties haven't been the issue. I want to see this against righties. I want to see this against a team who who goes out there and, and throws like four righties on us in a night. I want to see an offensive explosion on one of those games. Not a game where where a, a lefty is going out there and starting and pitching four or five innings. All right? that That's what I want to see. But I'm very, very happy with tonight's results. And, you know, the season's unsalvageable. Everyone agrees with that. But um, it, it's just, to quote the office, it's just nice to win one every once in a while. <coughs> you know, it's just nice to win one. So they win 12 to four. Some of the performances, I mean, the biggest one first and foremost is Jamer Candelario. Jamer Candelario was absolutely incredible in this one, had two home runs. They both went very far. Um 403 and 416, 17 feet. I, I mean, just absolutely was crushing the baseball in, uh, in in this game. Had another hard hit ball right up the middle, too. Three hits on the night. Has a, a few home runs since the All-Star break. Look, we just talked about literally, uh, again, as baseball goes, literally just talked about the fact that he might get non-tendered because of how much he's been struggling this season. And he turns around and does this. Um, he, he's going to have to do a lot more again, not, not breaking news by, by any stretch. I'm pretty sure we all agree with that, but if he has a really nice second half of the year that they're going to hold on to him. And last year he was a good hitter. And in 2020, after he started off like 0 for 20 something on the year, I think it was like 0 for 24, 0 for 18. So it was something crazy. He didn't get a hit in the first like week and a half of the season. And then he turned around and had like a 900 OPS after that, the, the like the rest of the year. So he's gone through hot and cold stretches before. That being said, this one's like almost 100 games into the season. And now like, oh, he's turning around. Well, you know, you can't just not be good for two thirds of the season and then turn it around. But uh, so hopefully... He gets hot and he stays hot. And if they keep him, we can just have a full season without the nonsense. And that goes for all these dudes. Baez went on a heater. Scope Scopes hasn't had a good year. He went on a little heater there in the beginning or middle of May. Like he, he had a nice little two or three week stretch. Like you, you need consistent hitting. You, you can't just have a full team full of dudes that get hot and then freezing cold and hot and freezing cold. So it was great to see Jamer look really solid at the plate. It was awesome to see him hit the ball hard. But, well, again, just like I said at the beginning about the team, long way to go to, to change people's minds about this season and whether it's a failure or not or, or whether they're, they still believe in the direction of the team or not. It's very much the same with, with Jamer Candelario. And that's really what we're doing here the rest of the year. This team's not, not making a run and not going anywhere in October. So what you're looking for the rest of the season is, is is fight from the team and you're looking for individual performances and dudes that you can circle and say part of the long-term plan. Going to be here when we're good again. Want to keep you because you're going to help us be a competitive baseball team next season. That's what we're playing for. And that's what we've been playing for for, for the last six years. And I know it's frustrating and nobody wants to play for that anymore. But that's that's where we are heading into August. So uh, hopefully it's a sign of things to come for Jamer because it has been a, a really, really rough go of it for this season. And uh, he's still got a long way to go before he changes people's minds about uh, 
uh, about getting on tender this offseason. Okay, we'll get to the rest of the offense, and we will, of course, get to the pitching. But first, I got to tell you all about our friends over at Blue Nile Jewelry. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com today. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond's shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring is truly one of a kind. If you're looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7. They are available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every single budget. So make your moment sparkle with the jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now is the Blue Nile Anniversary Sale. You can save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured. It ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. You can shop completely stress-free. Find your forever piece at BlueNile.com today. All right, everybody, welcome back to segment two here at Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Tigers win this one 12 to 4 in the, uh, in the, I almost said in the first segment. I don't know why I was calling back segment one here. In Monday night's game, won 12 to 4 against the San Diego Padres at home. Uh, Riley Green had a hit in this one. He, there was a, a, a pretty clear game plan for him at one point. They were just pounding fastballs inside. And he was still able to, to give some of them a ride. But uh, th- there was at one point, I think it was back-to-back at-bats, where it was pretty consistently, let's just pound this dude inside with fast, fastballs and see what happens. And so that's going to be, again, when, when Major League teams find holes, they exploit them, right? We saw that with Cody Bellinger. MVP caliber season one year has like an OPS sub 700 for like a lot of every year since then, uh, or slight exaggerating at times, but also not really like his OPS has been pretty rough at times. So, uh, because people found that hole up and in right. Cody Bellinger is a massive hole in, in the strike zone where if you just throw a fastball up and in, he's just straight up, not hitting it. And, So teams take advantage of that. So maybe somebody found something with Riley where they think they could take advantage of him inside like that. So that'll be adjustment, an adjustment that he will have to make. Uh, Like, I I mean, he had no strikeouts, so it wasn't overwhelming and he was able to get the bat on the ball, but there was, um, he even turned one inside out and sent it to the opposite field, actually, which I thought was pretty impressive uh, considering how far the ball still went, but definitely an adjustment that, that he'll have to make if, if teams think that that's a new strategy. So something to look out for. See if Riley Green's getting pitched with heat inside going forward. Javi Baez with a hit and two RBIs in this one. A strikeout, which is not uh, not abnormal for Javi. But the two RBIs in the hit, we will gladly take. His OPS is up to 643 now. Um, he went on that that heater heater at the end of June and, and early July. He, he really went on a heater and was hitting the ball really well and has since cooled off a little bit. He hasn't been as bad as he was in May, uh, but he has certainly cooled off and, and has not been swinging as hot of a stick as he was during that two or three week stretch there. So uh, hopefully the hit there is can get him back on the horse, just like with everybody else. Uh, Cody Clemens did come in late in this one because we were up by a ton. Robbie Grossman, one for five with an RBI, kind of a sawed off single over the shortstop's head. Um, look, Robbie's interesting because it's so, it's so sad. I, Cause I loved him last year, right? Like everybody knows I love dudes who, who work counts and draw walks. And he was the epitome of that. He was, he was one of the best in the league at drawing walks and had a 2020 season. And he was, he was so good and so valuable. And this year he's just struggled so mightily. And so it, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. I don't think you're going to get a team to give you actual like assets that are worth really anything for half a year of Robbie Grossman. Um, but uh, I, I guess my my thought is after the trade deadline, if you can't get anybody to to bite on him, I uh, I mean sadly he he might be just be a DFA candidate at one point, and then they might just rather give the at bats the remainder of the season to. 
a Derek Hill or, or to a, a really any outfielder that that's currently residing in the minor leagues that they think has a chance to uh, to be something. So it'll be interesting to see how, how they handle him the rest of the year. But one for five uh, on Monday night, and then the big fella goes yard for the first time since May. Uh, really cool to see. Did the little the little Jordan shrug as he's rounding the base. Um, he's the man. He's the man. His OPS is down to 682 uh, on the year. It was it was above 700 for a minute there, but went on a little bit of a cold streak. His batting average is still 284, and the OBP is 330, which is also like not really terrible. Uh, it's just the slugging percentage is now what it was. He's he's pretty much a, a pure singles hitter. But for one glorious night, went Yabo to left field. Super fun. Uh, it's always a a, a fun and Honestly, kind of like magical moment whenever Miggy homers pretty much from here on out. Anytime he gets a hold of one and and, and hits a homer and, and you see the celebration he does and the crowd's reaction and everything, especially in Comerica, any homer he hits for the rest of his career in Comerica Park is going to be kind of a, a, a really magical, cool moment. So always going to love that. Akil Badu gets a hit in this one, another blooper, but like we'll take it. He struggled mightily this season, so we'll take anything we can get. Um, Jamie Candelario, we talked about Harold had a knock, Willie Castro had a couple of hits. Uh, Jonathan Scope goes over, but had a walk, which is very off brand. But uh, he's another one. I, I'm not, he's interesting because he's been literally the best defender in baseball at any position. So, like, I, I don't know trade value for that. I, I really don't like we can, we can, as we get closer to the deadline, which is right around the corner, um, we, we can maybe talk about what value we think he has, but. It's very difficult for me to tug like a dude who has been, I mean, borderline a liability at the plate, but is is literally the best defender in baseball in any position. I don't know where value in that lies, if there even is any. I'm not even sure there is any value in that. Um, if, if there's a dude who, you know, he has one of the lowest OPSs of any qualified hitter in baseball, as we've talked about several times. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know if you're going to be able to dangle that in, in, in front of anybody. Um, but... Jonathan Scope uh, does draw a walk in this one. Now, the, the last person I want to talk about on the offense is Eric Haas. Eric Haas, we, I talked about Haasi, I want to say, in the beginning of June, mid-June. Might have even been a little bit in the late June. The month of June, I talked about Haasi and had talked about the fact that I – didn't think he was even long for the major league roster. And there was a point where I was very convinced that Eric Haas was going to get demoted and uh, was not going to be on the major league club because he was had, I mean, going into June, he had a sub 500 OPS, like absolutely uh, really, really laboring at the plate. Uh, he wasn't looking that good behind the dish. I, I, I didn't think he was long for the roster and they, they stuck with him. And they kept giving him a little bit more consistent at bats as well. He did not have very consistent uh, playing time in April, especially, but also May. And now he is absolutely crushing the baseball since June 1st, since the beginning of June. He has an OPS over 920, which is remarkable. Uh, hitting a lot of homers, obviously at the grand slam on Monday night. And with how much Tucker Barnhart has been struggling at the plate. I'm not sure how you justify giving Barnhart everyday catcher duty over Eric Haas. I, I don't know. Like it, it would be one thing if this offense was insane, right? Like if this was the New York Yankees offense and everybody could hit and everybody could hit a ton of homers and whatever, you could be like, okay, like, We'll give the nod to Barnhart still, maybe most days. Maybe we'll cut it back to 50-50 instead of like a 60-40 thing. But like we're still going to go with Barnhart a lot because we don't really need the offense out of the catcher position in this lineup because it's so lethal. And and we're still going to just give the nod to good, solid defense behind the plate. A, Barnhart hasn't been as good defensively as he has been in other years. I mean, he's a multiple-time gold glove winner, right? Hasn't hasn't lived up to that this year as much. Still a solid defender, but but certainly not as good as he has been in years past. 
And B, this offense is, as we've talked about a plethora of times, one of the worst in baseball. Not the one of the worst. The worst in baseball. One of the worst we've seen in the last like 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It's remarkably bad. So I'm not sure how you justify putting Barnhart in there really ever. Uh, and and I know he certainly will get playing time. And catcher is a brutal position on the body. And you can't just have Eric Haas play catcher every day the rest of the season. You can't. And even if you want to go, oh, like find him a spot in left field or give Miggy a day off and put him at DH, that's going to happen sometimes. You're absolutely right. But again, if, if you're mixing in days where he's catching in there, it's not possible. It, it is way too brutal of a position uh, on the body to, to be able to do that. But, I, I mean, he should be getting the vast majority of starts behind the dish at this point because this offense desperately needs it and the alternative – is is like a, a hair over 500 OPS. So Hasi deserves his flowers. Just wanted to cut out and, and specifically mention him because he has been so, uh, he started off so slow and has been probably the best hitter on the team in the last month at least uh, and one of the best hitters on the team since the beginning of June. So deserves a ton of credit, the hometown kid, baby. Um, and the Grand Slam beautiful absolutely beautiful all right let's get into the pitching side of things we'll wrap this up and uh talk about tomorrow's game but first i gotta tell y'all about our friends over at sports card investor the sports card investor app is here uh it's the world of sports cards completely reimagined it is one of the hobby's most powerful resources you can quickly check the value of your favorite cards you can find great deals and profit from the hobby you love. It's available completely for free in the Google Play and Apple stores. The Sports Card Investor app is a must-have for baseball fans. Like I said, it's completely free. You can easily browse over 630,000 cards from every sport with hundreds more added on each week. You can check the latest values of your favorite cards with 7-day or 30-day charts, find the best prices, and buy directly through the app with their eBay deals feature. It's super cool. It's 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 um, this app where the cards just pop up on your screen and they have trends on them. You can see, oh, is it trending price wise? What's been the trend for this player in this specific card or uh, just trend wise? Is that I don't think I worded that how I wanted to word it, but popularity wise, you know, is the card trending? Is it is this like the hot card on the market right now? It really is a, a must have. I'm a big card flipper and, and card collector. And I love this app. This is one of the very cool like perks of my job is I see all these cool products and, and I read to sell them to you, but I get to use them then because I get to hear about them. And this is one that I absolutely use all the time and you definitely should too. So download the sports card investor app today. It's available for free in the Google play and Apple stores, or go to sportscardinvestorcom backslash locked on. All right, everybody, welcome back to our third and final segment here at Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day. So, 12-4, to 4, not bad, not bad. Uh, the 4, we talked about the offense, we talked about the 12. Also, extra base hits in this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 extra base hits on 13 hits uh, along with 1, 2, 3 walks. That is a good day at the office all around. 16 base runners, 13 hits, five extra base hits, and four of those five extra base hits were home runs. That's how you draw it up. Ball go far, team go far. Also, pitching is like kind of an important thing. And so in this one, Drew Hutchinson gets the start. Four and a third, six hits, four runs, two walks, four Ks. The final box score is not flattering, and no one's going to try to convince you that it is. But I will try and convince you that he was a lot better than the final box score indicated because I, I thought he was actually really, really solid. I, I liked what I saw from Hutchinson today. Uh, the first four innings were pretty incredible, to be honest with you. He was getting a lot of swings and misses, which we haven't really seen. Uh, for him specifically, the slider was like borderline unhittable for four innings. Like, I'm not kidding. It had eight whiffs in the first four innings, his slider alone. 
had had eight whiffs. He had ten on the game. Uh, got two on the four seam fastball in the outing as well. But I mean, it was a it was a remarkable pitch. Average exit velocity in the whole outing was eighty seven point one, and that's even with the ball getting hit hard there for the homer, and then the fifth inning as a whole. Uh, really, really solid outing. CSW percentage, our fave, one of our favorite stats here, called strikes plus whiffs. Um, that was 30% for Drew. That's really solid. That's almost one of every three pitches was a called strike or a swinging miss. Very, very impressive. Uh, the pitch mix was really just four seam and slider. And it didn't need to be anything else because it was working up until the fifth, right? And, and you know, they they got used to it and, and figured it out. And then the fifth inning did happen. You know, it's not, I'm not trying to pretend like it didn't, but uh, had a, a very long break there in between uh, innings because of the offense exploding. And that AJ alluded to is probably had a little bit something to do with it. But for the most part, it was really just four seam fastball, uh, like mid, like belt high in a way. And if you miss that, then it was slider low in a way and nobody was hitting it. He went slider low and away a billion times and it worked almost a billion times. It was, it was pretty simple, but you know, sometimes keep it simple, stupid. And, and he did. And, and it was awesome. So uh, very impressed by Drew Hutchinson. And he continues to be a guy who he hasn't pitched us out of games. Like it's just the fact that the offense is brutal. Like he, he hasn't been lights out as he RAs four, eight, four, but he, he hasn't been a guy who, at any point, he takes the bump, and you're just like, wow, they, you know, well, Drew Hutchinson just got pulled, and, and the game's completely out of reach, and it's completely over. He's kept us in most games that, that he's been in, and that is worth something when you have a season where literally everybody gets hurt. Will Vest also pitched in this one, one and two-thirds, one hits, no runs uh, against him, zero walks, and two strikeouts, ERA down to three, four, one. The Will Vest is 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 interesting to me. He he got hit pretty hard uh, on the on the balls that the four balls that were put in play were all pretty hardly hit, and his command was not fantastic. But he still got the job done, which is fine. Good job, you know. But I don't know. There there was there was uh, the, the the command was not was not fantastic. I, I didn't think I thought he was missing spots a lot on the slider, especially. And this is a guy who in his last, I mean, he got demoted at one point. Right. And, and I, I would say for the last few weeks, last week or two before getting demoted, the command started to slip and early in the season, he, he was lights out and everybody was talking about the Will Vest story and the rule five. And then he came back and, and he's been so good. And a three, four, one ERA is still, uh, a very, very solid season. I'm glad he's on the team and, and he's going to get more and more high leverage situations after the trade deadline. I can guarantee you that. Um, but just something to keep an eye out for still, I mean, two strikeouts, fine outing, fine outing. Uh, but the, the command has, has been something, you know, that pass ball cost us uh, some, some base running some, I don't even know what I was trying to say there. Advancement of base runners. There you go. Um, just, just something to keep an eye out for, especially with the slider. Joe Jimenez, unbelievable, continues to be absolutely amazing. He has like three outings on the year that has pretty much heavily contributed to most of his ERA. Uh, and if you take out those three, he's he's been like borderline elite. Uh, he, he looks really, really solid this year. It, and unfortunately, with the way the season's gone, I'm going to be honest with you. If I had to put odds on every single person on the team getting traded at the deadline, I, I I regret to inform everyone. I would say Joe Jimenez has the highest odds on the entire team to get traded. Uh, I at this point I would be surprised if he didn't get traded. Uh, I think that him and the guy who pitched right after him, honestly, unfortunately, everybody's favorite. Uh, what does he call? He called himself some some type of redneck. It was like the 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 country. Maybe it was I don't remember. I'm not going to sit here and think about it all game, but he, he has some, you know, deep South Texan nickname for himself. And uh, he's everybody's favorite and he's an absolutely great personality. And he's been really good on the year. Two, six, four ERA had two strikeouts in this one. I, it wouldn't surprise me if he was gone too. you know, he signed into a two year deal. Got a year and a half of control on a guy that uh, is, is, has been one of the better relievers in baseball. 
if you start at the beginning of 2021 till now, uh, per, undeniably one of the best relievers of baseball. Sub two ERA last year, got a two six four this year. Pretty much unhittable against lefties. He's the man, and uh, wouldn't surprise me if he was on his way out too. Then Jason Foley gets the ninth. Mr. Big, a big, uh, Mr. A lot of appearances. Jason Foley just works his way into like every single game. The sinker continued to look really good. So we're, we're happy about that. He's got a sub three ERA now on the year. Jason Foley, 297 ERA. Respect him. Really good sinker. I love the pitch. So I, I just wanted to end on the bullpen specifically because I think it's important to talk about the fact that Joe Jimenez and Andrew Chafin are going to be sought after people and, and, it was reported by, I think it was Jason Beck, reported during the game that there's at least seven scouts were in attendance for the game tonight. It's it's hug watch season, right? It's uh, it's, it's it's trade deadline season. Scouts from other teams are going to be in attendance for at Comerica Park, and they're going to be watching the bullpen because there's not a whole else lot to watch. That didn't come out really great English, but you get what I'm trying to say. Not a whole lot to watch outside of the bullpen for other teams as, as far as acquiring assets. So uh, I would say Joe Jimenez has the best chance of getting moved, and it would not surprise me if the Tigers made multiple moves on top of that. And you got, you know, you, you got, there's an argument because you, if you are truly trying to be competitive next season, which I would assume is the plan, then there's guys that like Chafin and stuff, you know, there's guys who's, who's, control runs over into next year and you can go hey like maybe we'll hold on to you but fulmer is going to be a commodity chafin's going to be a commodity joe jimenez is going to be a hot commodity um there is some rumblings about gregory soto i don't think that one's going to happen but i guess nobody's truly off the table except for alex lang and alex lang's not going anywhere it's way too much control on him and having way too good of a year so those are the guys to, to take a look at for sure those are the guys all right. Thanks for making Locked On Tigers your first listen every single day. And I'll make your second listen to Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and his unique perspective on every team. Biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. That'll do it for me. 12 to 4. It's just nice to win one every once in a while. You know, it's just nice to win one. Does, doesn't mean a whole lot. Doesn't mean the season's staved. Everything I said yesterday is still very, very much true. But it's really nice to win one every once in a while. Peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. And I will catch you all tomorrow. Hopefully recap another win. Go Tigers.